Less than one week after a Siberian tiger correctly picked Russia to beat Egypt to the World Cup, another is predicting a win for the motherland over Uruguay tomorrow. And who knows, maybe the big cats are onto something, since the Russians have beaten the odds so far, which has only heightened the mood across the country. It's hard to overstate how excited Russians are about all of this. Playing host and having a competitive team has inspired a wave of national pride, even among those who have been forced to flee the country for political reasons. Our Chris Brown catches up with a prominent young Russian exile in tonight's dispatch from Bonn, Germany. With the World Cup in Russia and the Russian team winning, it should be an awesome time to be a Russian soccer fan. <laughs> That was their chance. But for Igor Cherniak, the emotions are bittersweet. I have mixed feelings uh, of, you know, reading uh, World Cup in Russia, like in Russian language and the stadium and realizing that it's in Moscow right now and I could be there easily. But OK, I'm in, I'm in Germany. We're in Bonn, Germany, watching a match next to the Rhine River. The city is the latest stop on what's been an unwanted, unnerving journey for the 20-year-old political activist since he was forced to flee his country. I had to, uh, to leave Russia because of uh, criminal uh, investigation uh, against me and, you know, uh, anti-extremist specials uh, concocted a, uh, uh, a, a charges. So, yeah, I'm here. This is where the, the hole was? Yeah. Right here? Our CBC team first met Igor in March in Kaliningrad, a Russian city on the Baltic Sea. Though still a teenager, he headed up the local headquarters for opposition leader and Putin nemesis Alexei Navalny, and that made him a target. Brick landed here, and um, he showed us where a brick was thrown through his window and nearly cracked his skull. He told us how Russian police were constantly intimidating him because of his ties to Navalny. In mid-April, he says police gave him an ultimatum, hand over everything he had on Navalny's activities or be put in a psychiatric hospital. You know, they looked at me as if I'm an ISIS uh, terrorist. ISIS terrorist. Yeah. The situation was urgent, so he fled. You know, uh, it, it happens with every horrendous thing that could happen, right? You kind of mentally prepare for it, but once it, hap it happens, you're, you're feeling kind of scared. To me, that was just sad be because of the conditions that I, you know, I was forced to leave country. Even as Russians throw a giant party, scores of people who oppose Vladimir Putin's government live in fear. Many are in jail. Others, like Igor, got out while they could. And in Bonn, he found lots of company. Uh, Igor was feted by prominent Russians living in exile, many of whom fight the Putin government from abroad because it's too dangerous for them at home. Among them is Jana Nemsova. She is the 34-year-old daughter of Russia's most revered opposition figure, the late Boris Nemtsov. Nemtsov was assassinated three years ago. Practically every day since, his supporters have brought flowers to the bridge next to the Kremlin where he was gunned down. The memorial is still here during the World Cup, even if most tourists don't understand its significance. Nemsova, a journalist with the Russian language arm of German public broadcaster Deutsche Welle, set up a foundation in her father's name. It recognizes acts of courage, including Igor's. That is very sad that people uh, must be very courageous to uh, promote human values, to promote democracy, to speak publicly. So if you criticize a uh, Russian government or Russian political leadership, you must be courageous. For those here, the World Cup and its gleeful scenes elicit conflicted feelings. While it's easy to find people who are boycotting it completely, prominent Putin critic Vladimir Karamurza says the tournament shows another side of Russia to the world. Now, people shouldn't equate an entire country of 140 million people with a small group of kleptocrats who are sitting in the Kremlin. Karamurza is now based in the United States after twice being poisoned in Russia 
which he blames on Putin. Putin doesn't care about football. He doesn't care about sports. All he needs is a nice photo op uh, with the leaders of Western democracies to show that he's still respected, to show that he's still treated as an equal. For Igor Cherniak, the next stop is university in the United States, where a scholarship awaits. He likely won't be able to go home for years, and with all that's happened, he would have every right to be angry. Yet he says he's not. It, it tells a lot that uh, everything that we've done is right, and we just uh, we got to keep fighting. But Jana Nemsova worries about the brain drain of young talent that may never return to Russia. That's very sad that these bright, talented, very hardworking and courageous uh, people leave Russia because we lose uh, human capital. Of course, he now says that he's going to come back upon the completion of his studies abroad, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm very pessimistic. My direction. Thank you. Yeah. Igor Cherniak may be Russia's youngest political dissident. Everyone who joined him on stage and spoke at the event said they're pinning their hopes for political change in Russia on him and his generation. Chris Brown, CBC News, in Bonn, Germany. So is the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, using soccer as a smokescreen to quietly slip through his agenda? Well, according to some reports, yes. Russian journalists say security forces were given sweeping powers to arrest perceived enemies of the state even before the World Cup began. Since then, it's alleged they have rounded up members of religious minorities, a top Russian energy company official accused of being a Romanian spy, and several dissident organizers.